So I envision the future of senescence with uh, better biomarkers to be able to detect the senescence phenotype with a much more reliable way. Also, a better understanding of the mechanisms that they are um, affecting the senescence phenotype to be able to manipulate the phenotype with therapeutic uh, value. And finally, I think that we need to integrate in the field uh, the infection process in the senescence uh, phenotype and how the senescence cells interact with the infection and the infection process for the future. Well, f first of all, I, I think we need to have a much better understanding of the of the molecular phenotype of, of senescent cells in, in vivo. Uh, what do they look like? Uh, where are they? How many of them are there? Uh, and I think we need to do that really at the, the molecular level. And so that's what's very exciting about the SenNet project that I'm part of in, in the US, where we're, we're really trying to do that with state-of-the-art uh, in situ uh, single cell mapping technologies, uh, looking at the transcriptome and the epigenome, etc., all at the single cell level in situ. So I think that's very exciting. That's going to tell us what, you know, what senescent cells are and where they are. Um, and then after that, I think we'll have to, you know, deconvolute those phenotypes and, and really figure out um, what is, you know, which, which phenotypes are perhaps beneficial and which ones are, are detrimental. Okay, I think senescence is a complex phenotype, so we're going to have to, to dissect it in vivo. And I think the best way to do that is going to be using, uh, uh, for example, viruses to target specific components of senescence to inactivate them and see what happens. Okay, I don't think it's feasible to do this in mouse models of aging using conventional uh, knockout mouse models. I think virus inactivation strategies are the way to go. That's something that we've been working on a lot in the mouse liver and it works very well in the mouse liver. I think we need to develop other approaches to be able to do it in other tissues. Uh, once we've figured out you know which components are important, either good or bad, then we can you know think about perhaps translating that into into humans perhaps with with drugs that that target those specific pathways so i think that's how i would like to see things going but you know that's a, a lot of work over many many years in the future for senescent cell research in vivo i see that our technologies are really advancing to give us an opportunity to really understand how diverse this classification of cells really is because we use a relatively simple term to describe an extremely heterogeneic type population of cells and what we really don't know is what type of cells are actually the really detrimental cells and which ones are maybe the beneficial cells because it all wraps up underneath one common term where I see us going is that the tools are finally starting to match where our thoughts are, where we can really investigate these cells on a single cell level to identify maybe some specific characteristics that really do define those cells that are the worst actors within the group versus those that maybe we don't need to be potentially influencing or uh, going after for targeting for elimination. So I think the future of senescence research in vivo is really exciting. We have um, a lot of really great evidence that senescence plays a causal role in aging. And I think with some advances in technologies, we're at the point where we can ask really important questions about senescence in vivo. And there are three areas that I think are particularly important. Understanding what actually triggers senescence in vivo, which we don't really understand deeply enough yet. We also really need to understand how to detect senescent cells in vivo better than we do at the moment. And if we can do that, we can understand a lot more about senescent cell burdens in individuals, in humans. And by doing that, we can understand ways in which we can target these cells in specific ways for specific aging associated diseases. What I would like to see for senescence in vivo research is that we can improve our understanding of which cells we are actually clearing, um, one of these improvements that we need is that we can follow uh, during therapy uh, the, the clearance of senescent cells in people. Um, from a more experimental point of view, we have these great senescence clearance models. However, they often have to be paired with injury models in order to really investigate the scenarios in which senescence plays a role. And it would be 
great if we had a model where we can really study the increase, like an exaggerated increase of senescence burden to assess the, the phenotypes in an unbiased way. So after many years working in cell senescence using in vitro culture cells, uh, it is obvious that we need to move in vivo. And many years ago, we produced some of the first evidence that senescence cells actually occur in vivo and they are very relevant. But this was done also in, in animal models and those are very interesting and very informative. But I think that for the future, uh, we clearly need to move into the clinic and we need to identify cell senescence in, in patients, in, in human beings. And that is going to be tough because we need to identify biomarkers, uh, proteins or other molecules that will tell us that uh, cell senescence is produced in vivo and that allow us to track what is the fate of these cells in vivo. Uh, this is crucial because we need to uh, realize if these cells are produced and if they, are, they, they, if they disappear, if they are clear out. And we need to establish associations between the presence of these cells in vivo and certain pathological conditions. This is also uh, crucial if we want to develop therapeutic strategies based on targeting for destruction of these cells. Uh, we need to identify again if these cells are produced, where they are produced, and if they persist or they are killed by the uh, drugs that we might develop in the future. So uh, it is uh, very interesting to produce a lot of knowledge in vitro in the lab, but certainly we need to move to a clinical setting where we can translate all the discoveries for the benefit of uh, humans and for the society. I think that now it's the right time to be studying cellular senescence. Cellular senescence has been characterized many years ago, but only recently it has been clear that it plays a, a causative role in normal aging in many diseases associated with aging. So I suspect that next necessary step will be a better understanding of where and when cellular senescence exists in different tissues, in different organs, in different systems, and the role they play. So certainly there is time, there is a need to uh, better understand their functions and their contribution to different diseases. And then it will be time for interventions. We now know we can control cell senescence with different agents, agents that initially they were just merely uh, research tools, but now they have potential to be therapeutic agents. And so people talk about the xenomorphic, xenolytics, or xenoagents able to impact on the functions and the properties, the roles, the activities of cell senescence. And so I suspect that in the very few years, so not decades, but in few years, we see the impacts of these approaches targeting cellular senescence and cellular senescence cells and cellular senescent properties in different conditions, again, associated with human diseases or maybe perhaps even normal aging. So I think that uh, we have two important points uh, to address in the future studies on senescence in vivo. The first one is that we need to adapt new technologies and new tools um, and use those technologies and those tools for refining subpopulations, the identification of subpopulation of senescent cells. And the second important point is that we really need to focus on humans. Uh, we have now very good evidence of senescence and very good ideas of subpopulations of senescent cells in preclinical uh, model organisms. But we need now to verify the presence of these cells uh, in humans. Different context, pathological, physiological, and to try to understand whether senescent cells are playing beneficial or detrimental role, depending on the context, on the age, on the tissue level. And this will be possible by combining, indeed, the new technologies to the human studies. So I think that the field of research of senescence in vivo is very exciting. So there are like many promises from the data that we have with animal models and starting in clinical trials. So I, I think that in the following years, we are going to have a lot of uh, possibilities with new clinical trials and maybe some going into phase three or to the clinic. But there are also many challenges. So I think we have to understand where senescent cells are in vivo 
what are the differences between the different types of senescent cells, how we can identify them, whether there are biomarkers that we can use in the clinic. And there are many things that, that still we need to understand for having a, a whole idea of the uh, physiological and pathological effects of senescence and also understanding the mechanisms that are relevant for treating senescence in disease. We see here uh, a common cause of a large variety of different uh, diseases uh, and we believe and we are very optimistic that by targeting uh, senescence, by targeting senescence cells, by eliminating them or morphing them, uh, we will be able to cover a wide range of various diseases, treat them, improve them, rescue from these diseases. And this is uh, very surprising because uh, on the other side, uh, many diseases are dissected down to personalized diseases. And here in the senescence field, we see senescence broadening up and including a lot of different disease varieties. We are working on multimodal imaging of senescence in tissues, of senescent cells in tissues, and we think that is the, the future of detecting these, these cells. And what we are doing is we um, are analyzing chemical parameters, um, immunological, histological uh, parameters, and we fit them together in a holistic manner so that we get a, a full picture of the tissue and the senescent cell residing within. And um, we want to combine this um, very high information content uh, uh, analysis with um, non-invasive imaging methods. What we are doing at the moment in the um, EU cost ne network Comulis. Uh, so what we are trying then to do is to see in vivo, in living animals, in living men and women, uh, the senescent cells and uh, underlie the data uh, with multiple chemical and uh, biochemical and histological analysis to be sure what we are seeing is a senescent cell and that we can also target the senescent cell then within the tissue context. Uh, just because there are many different types of senescence in vivo, uh, so in the future, if we can find out which uh, senescence is good, which senescence is bad, I mean, uh, beneficial, deleterious, we can target the bad, uh, deleterious senescence cell, not at all for beneficial senescence cell, so that we can uh, develop a you know, more efficient way to, to, to control the, the bad senescence cell, and you know, that will be good for the treatment for the aging associated disease. That's the future. But uh, you know, in addition to that, uh, we are, are, in my life, we are working on the, the working on to identify the cause uh, of the senescence. Uh, if we can find out the cause of the senescence, we can prevent the, the cause of the senescence and that hopefully it can, uh, you know, the, give us uh, the beneficial thing. So we see now a lot of um, studies in mouse models where uh, human diseases are modeled that are age-related and we know from the mouse studies that in many cases the diseases are associated with um, the appearance of senescent cells and in the mouse we see that uh, the disease can be delayed by eliminating senescent cells. Uh, the translation of this, these findings in human medicine will take some time. But in my view, if the community com continues to do research with the power they do now, this can be achieved in a couple of years for people with age-related diseases. Uh, the translation to the general public will probably require additional um, mechanisms to be established that we can do uh, meaningful trials. In terms of the future, uh, as a translational investigator, and by that I mean someone who does b both basic and mouse and human research on senescence, I think a really important question is to better understand how senescent cells can be harmful, but also how they can be potentially beneficial. So we know, for example, that with aging, senescent cells are, are harmful and they cause tissue dysfunction. But we also heard today 
that senescent cells may be important for tissue repair. Uh, and there's other evidence that they may help prevent cancer. So I think as we move from these exciting fundamental discoveries into animal models and into humans, we really need to understand what happens when you eliminate or reduce senescent cells. Are you helping aging? But at the same time, we need to be sure that you're not harming the ability of the animal or the human to heal wounds or that you're not developing more cancer by clearing these senescent cells. So I think overall, uh, and a really important question is to better understand the risks and benefits of manipulating senescent cells in animals and in humans. Work in cellular senescence has progressed from looking at individual cells in culture to looking in animals and human tissue explants. Now uh, this work has gone to um, what we call preclinical studies, that is studies in several animal species that are approved by regulatory agencies as well as uh, in human um, tissue explants and so forth. And clinical trials have begun. Uh, several of them have been published already. Initially, the results, they're very small trials. Um, there's a long way to go, but the initial results so far look positive. Doesn't mean they'll be positive the whole way through. Uh, there are many trials underway now that are what we call um, double-blind, placebo-controlled phase two trials. Uh, most of them for very serious conditions for which there are no other good treatments for people at the moment because we're worried about risk-benefit ratio. So far, um, we haven't seen what we call serious adverse events that are directly study agent related and uh, the trials have been allowed to continue to proceed, so they haven't been stopped for safety concerns at this point. Um, the early trials are beginning to show what we call safety, tolerability, and target engagement. That is, we are actually able, most likely it seems, to reduce senescent cell burden in people. Um, but what remains to be seen is whether these interventions will be what we call effective and efficacious. That means, do they reduce symptoms? Do they reduce disease burden? Is there long-term safety and so forth in humans? Initial results are looking positive, but that said, most clinical trials fail uh, somewhere along the way. And that's why I think it's a good thing that multiple tr clinical trials across multiple indications are currently underway. I think the public should expect that many of the trials will fail and not to be, public and politicians should not be turned off if they do, because that's to be expected. And that's why I think it's very important that multiple trials proceed in parallel rather than doing these trials in series. I also think it's important that physicians not prescribe these agents yet, um, except under some very limited circumstances um, where there's what we call emergency use. Uh, and I don't think uh, patients should, or people, the general public should be buying these agents from places like Amazon and taking them over the counter because we just don't know what all the downsides are yet. So I hope that these agents will work. I don't know that they will. Um, and we, we need to see, and we'll have to start with serious disorders with these agents being given one at a time at first. Then we'll look at combinations with other kinds of geotherapeutics and things like um, uh, lifestyle interventions, you know, getting adequate sleep, uh, exercise, and so forth. And another phase for disease-specific indications will be combining um, senolytics, drugs that selectively kill senescent cells, with disease-specific drugs that we already have to ask if effects are less than additive, additive, or more than additive. Early indications from preclinical studies indicate that these agents may be synergistic with disease-specific agents, that is more than additive, but we don't know until we do clinical trials. So those will be the next steps. I think it's gonna take five to 10 years before we have solid answers in people with serious illnesses and before we can start thinking of secondary prevention trials where we have people with a moderate illness and are trying to prevent progression or development of another illness. And it'll certainly be a very long time before we can start recommending senolytics to completely healthy individuals who don't, who are not at severe risk from uh, genetic or other kinds of um, markers of getting a serious senescence-related disorder. Uh, so for the general public, I think it'll be a while before we really know. Good afternoon. My name is Thanos Kotsinas. 
I'm an associate professor in the Laboratory of Histology and Embryology of the Medical School in the University of Athens. I'm here today on behalf of my director, Professor Vasilis Gorgoulis, to answer to a question regarding the future of research in the field of senescence. Uh, this is a very promising field. I think it uh, is the basis for many diseases. And since many future, uh, previous interviews have been taken, what I would like to stress is that we need tools. Our lab works on such tools, which we hopefully have in at our disposition very soon to track these cells, not only to detect them, but also with the possibility to target them and eliminate and thus help uh, for future diseases and also to improve the quality of life of uh, common people. Uh, my talk in this uh, workshop, for which I would like to uh, express my sincere uh, gratitude to the organizer for inviting us, will be exactly on this subject, how our lab works on the development of, of tools to detect and target specifically senescent cells. Thank you. I think the um, future of the research on cellular senescence in vivo is exciting. We're only starting to understand how different cells and different organs contributes to different diseases, how they contributes to normal function of tissues. So we will better understand which cells do what, which cells become senescent, which cells become senescent and contribute to different pathologies, and which cells become senescent and become necessary for tissue repair and tissue regeneration. With all this knowledge in hand, we would develop a better techniques, approaches, and probably drugs to help uh, development of good senescent cells or short-term senescent cells, and also to fight senescent cells that accumulate in our organism and drive development of different age-related diseases and aging. With all this, I think we will be able to improve health span and hopefully also lifespan of many, many people. Hi, um, I'm actually a cardiologist, so um, I am, uh, you know, uh, investigating the mechanism by which aging per se can accelerate cardiovascular disease. So the one of the most important cause of the accumulation of senescent cells in cardiovascular tissue. So nowadays we can eliminate senescent cells from those cardiovascular tissue, leading to an improvement of the cardiovascular disease. So now we are developing the senolytic uh, immune uh, modulation treatment. Uh, it's like a you know, cancer treatment. So uh, in the very, very near future, uh, we can provide very, very effective uh, treatment for those kind of age-associated disease. Thank you. In my opinion, future research on cellular senescence will show us many more examples where senescent cells are uh, beneficial, as well as physiological mechanisms of how they contribute to the health of our body. We might be able at the same time to distinguish between senescent cells which are present in physiology and are ben, uh, beneficial from those which are present in uh, pathology and are detrimental, causing age-related diseases, aging and, and, and death. Finding specific uh, therapies and compounds targeting the detrimental senescent cells might provide uh, benefit for our aging population. Well, for me, the most important thing I believe Senescence research in vivo is too slow, at least for me personally. Uh, but otherwise, uh, on a more serious basis, I believe the interesting aspect is to see how much it, uh, senescent cells are also involved in physiological natural processes, like we just see it in, with our wonderful PI, Mikolai, with his team, what they show that it, it's really a physiological process that senescent cells come up in vivo. And so I think we must very, be very careful with 
eliminating cells on one hand without seeing the side effects. But in this aspect also in our institute, the team of Professor Gurilari, they have this wonderful situation that they try to use actually more or less physiological mechanisms, which is the, uh, the accumulation of arachidonic acid, that with such approaches, instead of going, uh, say, more in the cancer drug-like uh, business, to be uh, successful in the near future. I think the senescence field has focused on the tools that were available to us for, uh, for decades, which were mostly cells and culture. Now, what we are realizing now is that there is a lot of heterogeneity, uh, not only between different types of cells or different types of, uh, of disease, like uh, cancer or age-associated disease, but also even within patient, in the, for example, in the context of cancer therapy, where we have a different type of, uh, or different cancer from different persons that will induce this uh, cell aging phenotype in different manners. So this is actually raising a lot of very uh, big challenges for in vivo senescence research. Some of them that I can identify is the ability to localize these senescent cells in time and place inside a, a tissue or in response to specific uh, treatment. For example, when you irradiate a tumor, uh, where are the senescent cells going to appear? What are they going to do? Are they close to the vasculature? Are they far from the, from the, the blood vessels? So all these questions will need new tools that we are currently developing. Uh, one of the approach that we are using is spatial transcriptomics. So this is the ability of uh, relocalized individual cells. And uh, we, we are talking about very rare cells that could be just a few percent of the total cells in a sample. So that's a very different concept from uh, the research that we have done in the past using cell culture, where all of the cells in the culture undergo the same phenotype at the same time. Now we are able to track back these cells to a few percent of the cell population in vivo. Um, so that's one of the challenge, but most of these transcriptomic studies use the fix, a fixed moment in time, so a biopsy from a patient. Now the next challenge is to uh, look at this over time because we know that the tissue will change during the treatment or the therapy, and we don't exactly know when these senescent cells will appear. So another challenge in this context is to develop uh, uh, non-invasive biomarkers that we can watch over time. So it could be a molecule that is secreted from the senescent cell. It could be models with bioluminescence that allows us to track senescence in real time what it appears in the tissue. So yeah, I think we have a very exciting time ahead and it's, uh, we're going to be able with these new tools to study the relevance of senescence uh, in tissues and, and learn how to target them at the right moment in time and space. The future for in vivo senescence and how it develops is a quite important question and I think um, we have the tools right now and we have the knowledge that uh, cellular senescence in vivo is not the same for all cell kinds and for all tissues, it is different. And I think what we have to do now to use tracer mice and to use techniques to understand the impact of senescent on different cell types of different tissue and organs because only that will allow us to specifically target these cells and um, we have uh, breakthroughs in, in, in the United States but also here in, in Austria and other countries they do have breakthroughs with senolytics but it's also at the expense of side effects. If we can go a little bit more specifically to specific senescent cells with uh, approaches and senolytics, I think that is the future of in vivo senescence. Thank you very much. I think research into senescence is incredibly important because senescence is one of the most important principles that underlie normal aging and not just normal aging, but also many age-related diseases. We are really at a time when knowledge in this field is exploding. There is no doubt that cellular senescence is highly relevant. Unfortunately, we really don't understand many very important details, mechanistic details about cellular senescence that would allow us to treat these diseases. I believe that in the future there will be an explosion of knowledge 
on cellular senescence, its involvement in many different diseases, and that we will be able to exploit this knowledge to develop new therapies. I think it's a very exciting time today because the field is still very, very young. There are so many things that we don't understand. There are many important things that remain to be learned. So I'm very happy for all the new researchers in this field because they really have a very exciting future in front of them. There are many issues could be uh, discussed just answering these very important questions, but uh, let me concentrate just a few of them. <clears throat> first, first of all, researcher will continue understanding the mechanisms involved in molecular and uh, cellular <clears throat> processes of senescence. This is extremely important, especially in case of uh, post-mitotic not dividing uh, cells, because there is uh, some literature, there is literature telling that uh, senescence of neuronal cells or other brain cells or cells just developing to central nervous system, it's not so obvious just like the senescence of other, po <laughs> not post-mitotic, but the dividing cells. However, senolytics are able, senolytics are <laughs> the compound which are able to kill, to eliminate, to reduce senescence cells. However, it was shown that senolytics generally do, do not attack in nervous cells, but on the other side, upon treatment of <coughs> animals with senolytic, we can observe improving of functional uh, activity of brain and general functional activity of nervous cells is increasing. So this is extremely very important to answer the question, what is the mechanism of uh, this improvement of uh, even brain, uh, brain functionality and cognitive uh, ability? And I think that dissolving <laughs> this question, revealing the mechanism responsible for senescence of post-mitotic non-dividing senescence cells, especially neuronal cells, will develop new possibilities for a treatment uh, not leading to elimination or to reduction of burden of senescence neurons, however, to rejuvenate these cells. Be actually, we don't want to uh, to have uh, losing, to, to lose our nervous cells because we are already losing during neurodegenerative diseases. So it's better to preserve them in a good uh, shape. <clears throat> the second thing is uh, developing biomarkers of uh, senescence. And uh, this could be the developing biomarkers of senescence, which uh, will be able to track, to measure, to track, to, 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 to detect uh, senescent cells. And these biomarkers could include epigenetic, genetic, metabolomic, proteomic, et, et, cetera, et cetera, and also other <coughs> mechanisms which uh, are very useful in uh, detecting senescent uh, cells. And if it will be possible to detect is <coughs> senescent cells, it will be much easier to uh, develop intervention which will be accurate and will, which will uh, kill senescent cells <coughs> in a proper time and proper, proper amount. Another thing is a development of personalized uh, medicine. Personalized medicine is very important because knowing markers of senescent cells, we will be able to treat individuals just according to their <coughs> Uh, their genetic background, their needs, and their biological and their biological age. This is really uh, very important because everybody age at different uh, rates. <laughs> so individual personal medicine, anti-aging medicine, is extremely important. Last but not least, problem could be. Uh, to discover or to develop completely new model of uh, senescence. And the future, I think, belong to tissue technique, which are uh, called uh, organ on chip, because this tissue allow 
to culture cells which are mimicking organs uh, functionality and I er are able to show us the connection between different organs. This is extremely important, especially in the case of senescence of post-mitotic neuronal cells because, as I said before, they are not directly <clears throat> attacked by senolytics. However, the, the directly senolytics affect their functionality. We've learned a, a huge amount about the biology of senescence. We have understood what it is. We have understood how important it is in, in biology. And what is important now is to bring that knowledge to people, to patients. Uh, myself, I'm working on a tumor-induced premature aging, aging that is faster than it needs to be. And we know that in animals, we can rescue that with uh, anti senescence interventions. Now we need to go into people. Now we need to see, does it help people to live not just longer, but for longer in good health, with good capabilities, with the ability to enjoy their lives. And I think it's possible. We are starting to do that. And I do foresee that in a few years we will know whether it works in people and if it does then that should really change the way how we today think about aging and age-related functional decline and age-related diseases. So I think the future of in vivo senescence will see a um, much more in-depth delving into the functions of both positive as well as negative senescence. And uh, one of the key um, components will be, you know, the leveraging big data in order to understand uh, what senescent cells are truly in vivo, determine their extent of the heterogeneity. Um, as we know, like, we will probably um, encounter that senescent cells are highly heterogeneous as they depend on the cell type that is undergoing senescence, the type of inducers, the uh, machinery and the timings in senescent cell induction. So this, I think it will be critical for the in vivo studies because at the end, our goal is to try to uh, really um, find ways to control cellular senescence in a way that is beneficial for um, organismal physiology. And for this, we need to find uh, biomarkers specific to senescent cell conditions and eventual treatments that will selectively target those senescent cells if uh, that is possible. And another big component of the future of senescent cell in vivo, I think, will involve the, um, the use of um, big data and these technologies that can be applied to many species because I think there's much to be learned um, from, from biology and from the evolution of cellular senescence in terms of what senescent cells are and um, how to um, manipulate them to our own benefit.